Good evening, ladies. I got to sing to you every time I start the show. I got to sing to you and draw out every word. <laughs> it's Kingdom Woman Bible study time. <laughs> Are you excited? Do you have your book? Are you ready to roll? I don't care which one you got. Do you got the yellow one? Do you got the vintage one? What do you have? Come on, get your book, get your snacks, get your dinner. If you TV dinner, whatever you got, get it. Get to this computer and let's get into the word of God. It is Thursday night and we feeling all right. Bam! <laughs> all right, y'all, we got... Ebony Williamson in the house. Throw some hearts in the chat for her. Woo! And you know who this lovely lady is. Shay Watkins. Dr. Shay is here and she is ready to work. I just keep working, Shay. You know, and I, I, I'm not even going to apologize about it, okay? I'm not because we love her and we want to hear more and more of what she has to say because it's always juicy. And so... I just thought these two ladies would be a great pair to come and help me do day seven, eight, nine. But if we don't get to all the days, it's cool. We at least we know we're definitely going to hit day seven because day seven was juicy. OK, I, I felt like I, I was embodying Priscilla Shira there on day seven because I just started a punch here. Telling us we lazy. <laughs> Y'all, day seven is work for it. So basically, day seven is a reminder that faith is really important in the life of a kingdom woman. But even more than that, work is even more important. So you can't have faith without the works. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. So we can have all the faith we want and all the hope we want and just believing that God can do A, B, C, D, E. But we got to put work into it as well. And so no better women to talk about work and being productive than these two. Because listen, these are two educational gurus over here. Teach on this side, doctor on this side. And I know... They couldn't have done it without being workers, without being women who have made up their mind that they're going to put in the work that's needed to get their goals accomplished. So here's the first question. Shay, I'm, I'm going to ask you this because I feel like I feel like you're like the productive kind of chick. It's, it's like. You know, and Shay, I watch your Instagram stories almost like I'm watching a movie, okay? It's like, what's Shay got going on today? What? <laughs> Where is she today? I mean, what? Let, let me, let me just. You're always doing something. You're yeah. always doing something. Okay, so since the pandemic, and I think we've been in the pandemic like 13 weeks now. Since the pandemic, how productive have you been on a scale of one to five? I'm always scaling stuff on one to five. God, what you think? Um, on a scale of one to five, I'm going to say I've been about a four. Really? Yes. That's great yes. though, Shay. It is. Okay. And so um, I think I talked about this before. But okay. The pandemic and having, you know, these stay at home orders really gave me an opportunity to not be so busy. Right. And so... Um, I was really then able to be productive. Right. And so I've talked right. about before just how, like, I felt like I was always busy, but I wasn't ever really getting anything done. Right. And so now that I had to, like, stay home, I was able to get into a routine that was free from distraction, and I was able to work on some of those more pressing and vital things instead yes. of getting, you know, distracted by the things that were being thrown my way. Right. So you think... You think that, you know, because for some people, I think that the pandemic has caused them to be less productive. <laughs> it's like we've gotten into this slump of no work, no, you know, everything's closed. I'm just going to sit here in, in, in my drawers and just <laughs> just watch TV. I ain't got my nails done, nothing. I'm just going to just do whatever I want to do. 
Um, it, so it's had a reverse effect on some people. But um, for me, I can agree with you. I've been more productive than ever. Mm. I feel like I've been overly productive, like just doing too much, <laughs> just finding stuff to do yeah. where I need to sit down somewhere and just <laughs> sit down. But Ebony, how you feel? Do you feel like pandemic has caused you, is your level of product? productivity has gone up or are you kind of like oh god I'm a little lazy now it varies okay. um from sometimes day to day for me to be right. honest right right um I have a friend who's coined the term energy management so hmm. I I, I love ladies write that down and give us the definition because this is juicy I like this energy management okay and you're managing your energy and you're determining if the task, if it's important or if it's urgent. Love it. Um, so love it. I try not to get too caught up in some things if it's really not important. Right. Um, and I do, I guess, as an educator and mm-hmm. a planner, um, mm-hmm. I look at if, you know, if it's really, really important. Right. Or if it's urgent. Now, your urgent may not be my urgent. Hello? And it goes back to me managing my energy because I have my own goals that I'm trying to work on and just kind of managing my day. Right. So if my energy overload is just through the roof, right. I kind of have to take a step back and yeah. just say, okay, Eb, let's prioritize what you can do next and what you can put off to maybe try to work on later. So... Some days I'm very, very productive. Some days you kind of worry yourself into a tizzy, and I try not to do that because then that brings on the the headache from the computer and anxiety and all of that other good stuff. So yeah, you know I've I've maintained daily yeah um, because I've still been working from home, but I just try to manage my energy a little bit better. Whoo! I feel like that was a whole sermon managing your energy deciding what is worth your energy Mm -hmm. in that day exactly okay so ladies how how do we decide or how do you decide and prioritize and we're gonna get into the book how do you prioritize you know what is worth your energy from day to day so for me I do have a literal checklist in my phone so I don't know if that's super weird or is that normal (laughs) of What needs to be done by when? I mean, Siri is constantly reminding me of just stuff. I mean, she told me today, you need to go to the grocery store and get toothpaste, paper plates, forks, spoons, (laughs) and two black shirts for Judah and Jordan. Because they have decided now that they want to wear black or red only. Please, somebody just pray for me. And when you think about me, you w- walk by Walmart, by the little children's section, just get all the black shirts they got, okay? So, <laughs> so what? So what's your tool to help you, you know, manage your energy? Um, so I, I like lists too. Yeah. And um, I'm big about um, accountability. Yes. And so one of the first things that I did um, during this kind of quarantine Y'all know I love social media. So I put my list out on social media so that other people could keep me accountable. Mm. And folks were like, will really DM me and be (laughs) like, you know, how's your garden doing? Or, you know, are you writing that publication today? Yeah. So I kind of just feel like luckily I've been surrounded by people who are going to hold me accountable to the things that I'm saying. Yeah. So you literally put it out for people to see this is this is what I want to accomplish. And they've been on you like white on right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll hit me up, like, you know, um, and they'll even ask me, like, tips, like, how did I do it? Right. And so I take pleasure in those kind of things, you know, to know that, okay, it's other people who are invested in my growth. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it's kind of like I have to make sure or I feel the pressure to get it done because you kind of don't want to let them down. Mm-hmm. And so when I look at my list, I'm like, okay. You, I, I kind of look at it from a cost benefit analysis. Like, okay. how, how is it going to help me? What's the thing that I'm going to do that's going to be the most helpful to me in this moment? Right. Or, you know, or in this season of your life? Right. So you put them in order of that. Yes. See, now that's one thing I got to do. <laughs> now that's one thing I got to do. Okay, now, Eb, give me yours and then we'll get into the book. I use list as well. Okay. Um, and I. Re- 
I rely on like my core people. Yeah. So just like how Shay said, yep. I have like a couple of people where I can tell them, please remind me because I forget. <laughs> and I'm not going to be offended if you have to remind me again. Right. Because I just might forget. So I make lists and I have post-its, but I still rely on my core people because I know they're going to call me and say, Abe, did you do it? Did you do it? And I'm like, oh, thank you for the reminder. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Thank you so I can get on it, so I yes. can be productive. Yes. Okay, and so that's what day seven is basically talking about, a, a productive woman and how, you know, your productivity, how it can be a tool that God can really use for his kingdom. Um, and I think that, you know, my imagination when I see God, you know, passing out assignments <laughs> to different women, you know, I, I'm like, Lord, don't skip over me. Like, you know what? She ain't going to do it. I ain't going to give it to her. <laughs> I'm not even going to give her this assignment because she lazy. She ain't going to do it. She going to have a bunch of excuses. And I just don't want to be that chick. I don't want to be that lazy chick in the church. And everybody knows that I'm always going to have an excuse or a can't or a no or a reason why. It can't be done. I want to be the one that God can count on and depend on to fulfill assignments, okay? So, let's go ahead and get started in chapter 7. And don't y'all get mad at me. I wrote this eight years ago. I don't know. I don't know. I, I may not even feel like this no more. <laughs> but, Ebony, just read that first paragraph and then Proverbs, um, that little excerpt of Proverbs 31. Today, I want you to allow God to challenge you and push you further into your destiny. Mm -hmm. I really believe that God is counseling the lazy spirit in our lives. I, for one, am thankful for it because nothing productive gets done in the life of a lazy woman. I speak over your life today that laziness will not be a part of your life anymore. We will be productive women for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I want to share this scripture with you. Mm -hmm. So it's Proverbs 31, 26 through 29. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. All right, y'all. That was that was heavy now. I went Priscilla on y'all. Nothing productive gets done in the life of a lazy woman. You know, and when you think about laziness and, you know, how God just sets up that story, the, the choice of words. Now, first of all, laziness being uh, connected to bread, that really hurt my feelings because I love bread. <laughs> When I read <laughs> when I read that, I just imagined myself just sitting on the couch, just eating <laughs> and being lazy and just doing nothing. And I think that that is that is the scene that God is trying to set up. Um, and if we're not careful, we will eat the bread of idleness daily, and it will begin to consume us. And think about eating bread and the calories and it, the the pounds and the Come, all that comes with that. It weighs you down. I almost <laughs> you smack somebody like that's what I'm talking about. It weighs you down. Uh, and you know, even the most productive woman, we can have those times where we just get into a slump and, and you know, we get weighed down with other things and it keeps us from being productive. So it says we got to be careful. And this is just some notes up to not to eat the bread of idleness by turning a blind eye to the affairs of our life, our family, our household, our husbands, our children. We see problems, but we're too busy to notice or too lazy to care. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Instead, we need to be busy, faithfully managing the house, managing our homes, watching over our families, and learning to do it well, practicing discernment, things God is trying to show us in our homes. So just thinking, even if you're a single woman, Ebony, you're single now, right now, but, you know, there are 
things that single women and women who don't have children, there are things that you also have to attend to in your life. Because if you don't attend to them, they will get out of control. And you would just tell, we, I ain't going to tell your business, but I tell everybody's business that's on the couch, okay? Just, this is, this is, if you're coming on the couch, I'm telling your business. So, Ebony, <laughs> just tell us, you just mentioned something that in your home, you're trying to handle a situation at home, and you have had to really turn up your discernment and work hard to figure out the solution, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm currently dealing with a roof leak. Right. Because um, you're a homeowner. I'm a homeowner. Right. I have whoop, a roof whoop, leak. Whoop. <laughs> and my homeowners association clause takes care of the exterior, which is the roof. And I'm responsible for the interior. Right. So having to deal with that roof leak, mm -hmm. um, I want it done right. Yeah. And I have to read and understand the HOA responsibilities. Yes. My responsibilities yes. as the homeowner with my yes. insurance and my deductible. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kind of had to just lay it out there and just make it plain. Right. Right. I want it done Right. Right. And um, those are your responsibilities. So if I take care of my part, you take right. care of yours. And you got, I mean, they gave you no after no after no, but you have had to research and be productive in yeah. the care of your home. I literally, I mean, and Google is your friend. Yeah. So I, I've never filed okay. a claim. Google everything. I've been in my home 10 yeah. years. Right. So I Googled what to expect and what the steps were. And, mm -hmm. you know, and even when I initially called to make the claim, I got a little pushback and they said, are you sure you're going to meet your deductible? You know, those type of things. So. Yeah. Insurance is a business, yes. But I want those that are in that business to take care of their duties, right? Yeah. And so, you know, as women, we have to go the extra mile in everything you do. Don't you know? Don't just have do something, right? And I think that's a wonderful example of that. Not just have stepping, but going about to make sure that everything connected to you um, is is well and productive. So let me read it to you in the Message Bible, Proverbs 31, 26 through 29, because I got to always do that. It says, when she speaks, talking about the Proverbs 31 woman, when she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. <laughs> and she always says it kindly. Hmm. Now that's heavy. Okay. That's heavy. Would you that's say heavy. Sure? I don't know if that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that. but that's why that's why we can look to her as an example of where we want to go. Because I mean, sometimes it's hard to be assertive and be kind at the same time. It is okay. Mm -hmm. It's an art to it. Okay, I, I've learned it. It's an art to it. So it says she keeps an eye on everyone in her household, and she keeps them all busy and productive. So as a woman, she makes sure that not just her life is bearing fruit. But her children, her husband, she looks at everybody connected to her, making sure that you live in your best life. So what, Shay, just, just give, me, give me your thoughts on that right there. Just as it concerns, just think about Jalen and Pastor Drew, you know, in your home. Are you like <laughs> the productive police there at the home? Okay. <laughs> So it's so funny. Um, so here's me telling my business. Right, right. right. So um, at work, when I was a retail manager, they nicknamed me and they used to call me Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes? Hawkeyes. <laughs> what? They would call me Hawkeyes. Because you could spot it. Yeah. They, okay. They were like, okay, you know, Tanisha, she can see anything. You know, she can spot anything from a mile away. And right. that's kind of how I am at home as right. well. And sometimes I get frustrated and I'm like, why can't Jalen and Andrew see the same things that I'm seeing? <laughs> like, I know you see that bowl in the sink. Yes. I know you see that spoon. Yes. Um, so yeah, so in my household, I definitely am the productivity police. Um, <laughs> and I do have to work on, you know, being kind when I give the instructions. Yeah. Um, but yeah. something that Ebony said that kind of really related, um, spoke to me. And when we look at it in the NIV version is that, um, Proverbs starts off with saying that she speaks with wisdom. Yeah. And you talked about how Google is your friend and you have to research. And I think part 
part of the wisdom of being able to guide the people in your home mm-hmm. is to know where the household is going. Yes. Um, and so when you yes. collectively have a goal and your family is moving along with you, right. you know how to guide them appropriately. Yes, I love it. So when the family has a collective goal, we know we all know what direction we're going in. We can move in that direction, just like Habakkuk. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so those who read it can run. So this is a spur of the moment homework I'm going to get, okay? Because I really feel like we should do this. I feel like we should put our household goals somewhere up in the house so everybody can see it that's in the house. Ebony, so you can see it every day. And you have to stare at it and deal with it every day. You know, let's do that. So, ladies, here's your homework. If you can, I, I mean, like, go to Walmart, get a nice little, <laughs> little cardboard, you know, a little paper. Look, not, not, not nothing thick. What, come on, you a teacher. What we need? Um, just the regular poster board. Poster board. That's what we need. Get some poster board. Draw some flowers on it. And put the house goals on there. The first woman that posts her house goals, I'm going to give you a churchy chick shirt. And it's going to be fly too. It's going to knock your socks off, your stockings off. You hear me? So get your house goals. And make it pretty now. I don't want no pencil or nothing. (laughs) We want it looking good, don't we, Shay? The first lady to put your house goals up. On um, you posted on social media is coming to your house. I might hand deliver it with my mask on. Okay, so that's it. Putting our house goals, being productive, um, making intentional efforts to move the family forward, right? right? To move our lives forward. So here's here's what else it says. So she she keeps a hawk eye. She got the hawk eye. Okay, (laughs) on everybody in the house. She keeps them busy and productive. But then it says her children respect and bless her. Her husband joins in with words of praise. Many women have done wonderful things, but you outclass them all. Charm is misleading and beauty soon fades. But the woman to be admired and praised, here's where I want to be, is the woman who lives in the fear of God. So, you know, allowing yourself not to be idle is because every day you are living in a reverence for God. It's not just a Sunday to Sunday thing. It's not just a Thursday night thing. It's an everyday thing where you consider God in every move you make. Does that sound, does that sound tough and hard? I mean, that's, that's doable, right? That's doable. I mean, That's then do- you're convicted because you're right. like, I want to please God. Yes. So I want to make sure that I follow my vision. That's right. Yeah. And, and and we want to make sure we follow the vision. We want to make sure that, you know, that others are blessed by the vision we have for our life. Right. But, <laughs> and just thinking about that is thinking about just simple things like your degree. You know, that's something... You are not just using it as a personal goal, but that's something that's blessing other people. Yeah, yeah. What you have, the, the education you have gained is blessing all of our lives. So your goal should not just bless you, but it should bless everybody connected to you. Yeah, right. yeah. Amen. Okay. I'm wish. Okay, Shay got the new book. So Shay, you're going to go to the next page, which is page 50 for you. And just read us that last um, paragraph right there with that in mind. With that in mind, I want you to make today your work for it day Mm -hmm. because nothing worth having in life is going to just fall in your lap. It takes hard work and strong faith to be a Proverbs 31 woman, to be an extraordinary woman. Are you satisfied with being ordinary or do you want to be extraordinary? The Bible says in Ephesians 3 and 20, now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all I ask for or imagine according to his power that is at work within me you are destined to do great things but it's going to take work if i hit you i didn't mean to miss you if the lord hit you he didn't mean to miss you you are destined to do great things before you were put in your mother's womb you were destined to do great things but it's always going 
to take some type of work. So we're going to jump over and look, don't forget your homework, but we're going to jump over to day eight. We'll not quit because that's it. Those are going together hand in hand like a puzzle piece. And then we're going to send you home. Okay. So no matter which book you have, day eight should be, uh, we'll not quit, right? No, 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 no. What day is that? Nope. Day nine, we'll not quit. That's where we're going. Day nine, we'll not quit. Okay. So we're putting those together like puzzle pieces because when you get started on your road to being productive, the first thing the enemy going to do is tell you there's too much. You ain't got to do all that. Okay. Take a break. And then you take one break and turn it to another break. And then before you know it, the goal is off to the side. It got dust on it. So, you know, there's got to be a relentless drive in you to stay in this vein of productivity. So I'm going to read the first paragraph. Today, I want to encourage your heart and spark something deep within you to endure. Trying to stay focused can be difficult, whether it's trying to stay balanced, trying to reach a goal, trying to finish school, trying to climb the career ladder. What are you trying to do right now? I want you to throw it in the chat trying to uh or working to progress in ministry you may know the feeling just when you are close to reaching that goal here it is a storm a distraction or a roadblock comes and makes it hard to keep pressing okay so ladies just just give me just think back over your life you know we tell it all on the couch of 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 a time that you have really had to push through some major roadblocks or storms to get a goal accomplished. I know both of y'all, I mean, both of y'all go in oriented. So <laughs> it, it, either one of y'all can, can, can throw it out there. Um, I'll start it off. Okay. So, um, as I've said before, you yep. guys know that I graduated with my PhD mm -hmm. last um, December. Yeah. Um, but it was a really rough road. Um, and um, I had to submit my dissertation, um, you know, by a certain deadline. And right. I was there. I had it written. And I tell you, like Andrew can attest to this. It seemed like every time I was close to depositing my dissertation, it right. was always something that was stopping me, like right. just coming out of the blue. Um, for instance, my department called me and said, hey, you're three credits short. You know, you're not going to be able to graduate. You're not going to be able to defend this semester. And I'm like, what? You know, I've been taking classes <laughs> for five years. Where did this three credits come it from? It seemed like it came out of the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you know, yeah. all the obstacles that I was facing. My committee members wouldn't yeah. sign things on time. Yeah. And, um, you know, thank God for my husband who really has a really calm spirit. But, yes. you know, he would remind me that, you know, this is just part of the test. Like, process. you're already finished. It's already there. Yes. You know, everything is already aligned in your favor. And during those times, I really needed that because I felt like I was about to, you know. Give not, up. Yeah, yeah, I was not about to be Dr. Tanisha Watkins over right. these very small things. But right. when you're in the moment, they just seem, they seem really big. Yeah. And what people don't know, Shay, is that you did that miles away from your husband, miles away from home. I can only imagine the degree of difficulty, you know, in doing that. You, you were trying to be a doctor. You got married. You're away from home. It's, it's just so many factors in that um, that you had to overcome. And it, it seems like the enemy, I mean, why couldn't they tell you about these three credits like two, three years ago? I mean, it's like. Right, right. You know, I'm like, why, why didn't someone catch this, you know, months ago? Why right. is this just happening right now? Right. But that's the thing, you know, it really makes for a great story and a good testimony. Yes. And I know, again, going back to the social media, if people are checking for me about my garden. I know they're checking to see how can this woman with this child be 600 miles away with no family yep. getting this doctoral degree yep. on her own. And so I know it reassured me that like that trial and this story is not just for me. It's for somebody else. Yes. And, you know, just the push through was a blessing to all of us. So, Eb, you got one? 
Yes. So during the pandemic, you know, schools have been closed. Right. We're teaching from home. Right. And I teach at night and alternative high school as well as my regular eight to four thirty mm-hmm. teaching schedule. So my nighttime students, um, they come from so many different backgrounds. Yeah. It was already hard transitioning, trying to, you know, be at home and you're calling students, they don't answer, you're calling parents. Right. Things like that. But it would be overwhelming because I, at home, I still literally work 8.30 to 8 p.m. teaching. From home? From home. During the pandemic? During the pandemic. Wow. And I had one particular student who I would, you know, everybody's frustrated. And yeah. so that's a given. We're human. Yeah. But I had one student that, you know, you call, he didn't answer. And he was supposed to graduate. And, you know, I was just like, you know what? Well, if he's not worried about it, then, right, you know, right. I'm not going to be. I'm, I'm, why mm-hmm. am I stressing myself out? Mm-hmm. So I finally got through to him, and he said, Miss Williamson, I had just given up, and I was just going to let it go. And so I felt myself, like, wanting to cry, and I was like, no, 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 no. no. So I got to get out of my feelings, because if nothing else is going to happen, you are going to be a black man with a high school diploma. Yeah. So let's do it. Yes. We got three weeks left, yep. and I'm going to work you. I'm going to stay on you. I'm going to call you. I'm going to bug you. You're going to knock these classes out, and right. you are going to graduate. And I told him, I said, I'm not going to give up on you. I know your situation is unique. It's not like everybody else's. Yeah. But I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be that mother that you need that's going to stay on you. And so I literally gave up my weekends the last three weeks of school where I was really working with him. And I was like, you call me. So he would call me. I would be at the store. He was like, I just finished that assignment. I was like, okay, I'm going home. I'm going to give you another one. But, you know, I was ready to just give up because I was frustrated with thousands of emails and Zoom calls. But... He kind of recentered me when he said I had given up because it was almost like I had as well. But I said, I'm not going to let you give up. I'm not going to let you give up. So that's he heavy. finished, and I felt like that's my son. <laughs> Congratulations. He finished. He wow. Did. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So you got him across that stage. I got him across. Yeah, but look. He, these children are your assignment. This ain't just yeah. a job. It's not just a job. No. It's an assignment. Right. And you had quit, not knowing that he had quit. Yeah. And then his quit made you jump back into action. Because I was like, well, I guess he'll just have to go to summer school. And then I was like, you know what? Let me just, we're going to try again. Yeah. And yeah. when I talked to him, he said, I had given up. And I said, no, no, giving up is not an option. We're going to do this. Yeah. Not an option. We're going to do this. Yes, you, Lord. You will be a black man with a high school diploma. Yes. And yeah. thank God that you could see his finish line. Thank God that Drew could see your finish line. You know, we, we've got to get around people and surround ourselves with people that can see us at the finish line before we get there. And so here's your second assignment for for your three goals, for your goals that you now have up on the refrigerator, um, <laughs> on the wall in the living room, wherever you put it, I want you to designate your accountability partner, your person that can see you at the finish line, that can see you as that homeowner, that can see you accomplishing that goal even before you get there. Okay, ladies? And if your accountability partner is on tonight, call them out, child. Tag them right now and say, you it. Tag, you are it. You you are my uh, accountability partner to help me not quit, to help me be productive. Okay, so this scripture, and we get ready to go, um, Luke 9, 61 and 62, I'm going to tell you to really, really, really dig into that, even though at this point we may have already passed these um, days on our journey, but I want you to go back and take a, this is like extra credit homework, okay? You remember how extra credit was now? You you always went home and did that because you needed it to get to make sure that grade was on point. Yes. So we're going to go back, look at Luke 9, 61 and 62 in the NIV. 
um, and just dig into that and get the message of what Jesus is trying to tell us in that verse. And I'm going to finish out uh, the end of the day, the will not quit, the last paragraph. It says, I want you to make this day your will not quit day because quitting is not an option today. Do y'all hear me? Quitting is not an option. Giving up is not a choice. I feel like, I feel like we talking to somebody ladies today. We are. I feel like we are talking are. to a lady who has already decided that this is too much. This is not worth it. She can't take it anymore. You know, it's, it's too much stress. It's too much pressure. But quitting is not an option. You cannot give up. If you need somebody to be in this process with you, then pull on one of your sisters that is on the chat tonight. Your success is a representation of your father. There are people depending on you to reach the finish line. So don't you dare quit. Ladies, I think that's a whole sermon. That's a whole sermon. A whole sermon. A whole sermon. That might be a whole series. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole series on its own. We are not going to quit. We are going to stick and stay with exactly what God has assigned to our lives. We are not going to eat that good old bread of idleness. I mean, it may have butter on it and everything, but just chill <laughs> on the idleness bread, okay? Let's be productive this week. The last two days of the week, be productive. Find in your heart to do those things that you thought were too hard and impossible. Dig deep, get it done, okay? So we're going to close out with um, the closet prayer for the will not quit day. And Eb, I'm going to let you just read a little bit of that closet prayer. If you'll read the first page, I'll read the second page. I'll close out the second page of the closet prayer and we'll be out. Lord, I come to you today as your daughter. I give you glory for who you are, for your strength, for your might, and your power. Your sovereignty, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yes, For your sovereignty, say thank you today. Mm -hmm. Father, I release to you the burdens that I have been carrying, burdens that you never intended for me to carry. I cast all of my cares upon you, you, all of my worries and all of my fears. Mm -hmm. Father, calm my restless spirits, quiet my anxious heart, bring stillness to every troubling thought with the assurance that you are in control. Lord, help me to let go today of the tight grip I have on things that you want to control in my life. Give me the strength to let you be in control of the direction of my life. I thank you for your promise to sustain me, preserve me, and guard all that I have entrusted to you. Protect my heart and mind with your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, may your will be done in my life, even when it is uncomfortable for me. Lord, I declare that your will is what's best for me, and your will is what I will seek. Lord, help me to accept your will and walk therein. When it is difficult, I desire your will. When it is painful, I desire your will. When it's lonely, I desire your will. Lord, when I am hard pressed on every side, thank you that I am not crushed. Mm -hmm. When I am perplexed, thank you that your word says that I am not in despair. When I am persecuted, thank you that I am not abandoned. Even when I am struck down, I praise you that I am not destroyed. I choose to believe that you are my deliverer because you are your mighty right hand. You will drive out every force that has set themselves against, up against me. Lord, I thank you for your promise that you have made to me, and you will bless those that bless me, and you will curse those that curse me. Father, I thank you that I am blessed in the city, and I am blessed in the field, blessed in my going out, and blessed in my coming in. Because of that, Lord, I am strengthened today. I will not give up. I will not quit. I will not deter from the path that you have set out for me. 
I believe that I am well able Mm -hmm. to conquer every obstacle, to weather every storm, and to speak to every mountain set before me today. I rebuke the spirit of fear, for I am established in righteousness. Oppression and destruction shall not come near me. I declare that I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. Lord, when I feel like giving up in the battles of this day, remind me, Lord, of the victory that I have in you. Lord, I pray that your word take life and be in active operation in my life to heal, deliver, and set free, to make me whole wherever I am broken, to build me up wherever I'm torn down, to provide for me wherever I am experiencing lack, to comfort me wherever I am experiencing turmoil. I am an overcomer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, ladies, we'll see you next time. Don't quit. Don't quit. Bam. Party here on the west.